welcome to my sewing room. If we've not met, my name is Christine, and this is my channel, Christine Sews A Lot, where I talk about all things sewing. Today, I am wearing the South Bank sweater by Nina Lee, and I've sewn it in this Art Gallery jersey knit. This is my entry into the challenge that's being run over on Instagram by Michelle Sews Again, Sew Purple to End ALZ. This is to raise awareness and funds for Alzheimer's research. I'm gonna link Michelle's information below in case you would like to also participate in this challenge. It's being run the month of October and there are prizes. So I know it's not Halloween yet, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Christmas is coming. I love to give handmade gifts and I have found that if I don't jump right on it, I can wind up running out of time and either be very frustrated or unable to complete my projects. So that's why we're talking about Christmas gifts when it's seasonably inappropriate. In the next several weeks, I am going to be posting tutorials in a series called Sewing Gifts. If that is something you think you'd be interested in, please hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell so you'll be alerted when my videos are posted. Today, we're going to start off with sewing for the girls in your life. All of these projects are super quick, easy, inexpensive, and kind of fun to make. We are going to be making scrunchies, fabric bows, and reusable makeup wipes. I'm going to link in the description box below all of the measurements and timestamps for the different projects. We're going to start off with scrunchies. You'll notice the wardrobe change. It's still a little warm here in South Alabama for the South Bank sweater. So we're starting off with scrunchies and the beauty of scrunchies is you can customize them. You can use any fabric and make them in any sizes. So I'm going to show you a few sizes I have already made up. I'm making some of these up to donate to our Christmas Bazaar at church and I've made some in this really large size with a little bit longer elastic in this particular one. This would be great for fitting over a bun. So I've made a couple of these large scrunchies and then I've made some smaller ones that are more suitable for a young girl with a narrower width. So this is the size we're going to make today. And you'll notice these I have not sewn off yet. I want to make sure I use a matching thread since these are going to be donated. Since we're making the medium size, I've cut it out about 19 and a half inches wide. That's from salvage to salvage and three inches tall. So for this first step, we need to head over to the ironing board. While I'm here at the ironing board, I'm going to clip away some of these loose threads. I really love this fabric. It's a cotton and steel. I made myself some sleep shorts out of this. So I have it wrong side facing up and I'm just going to turn over a little bit. Somewhere between a quarter of an inch and a half inch just on one end and I'm going to give it a press so press that down now I'm going to pin it along the long side right sides together and we are going to sew along this long side so let's head over to the sewing machine. Okay, I'm gonna to try to sew this without blocking your view. I've prepared my scrunchie and I am just gonna line this up along the edge of my presser foot. 
which is about a quarter inch seam allowance. I've got a regular stitch length of 2.5 and so I slow down so I don't go too fast. You lock your stitch in and I'm just going to sew along this seam, remove my clips as I go. When I come to the end, I'm going to lock that stitch in and cut my threads. Now it's time to turn this out right side. But before I do that, I'm going to clip some loose threads because we don't want them to wind up poking out into our project. Now you can turn this tube by attaching a safety pin to the end and then pushing it through and pulling and scrunching through. But I have one of these turning tools, so I'm gonna use this. I simply insert it through the tube. I'll have information about this device below. No affiliation, I just found that in all my tube turning, I rather like this device. And what I do is I insert one end in and get almost to the end. See if you can see it. And then I clamp it down. Since I'm right-handed, I'll switch hands. And you first have to get it going by pulling on it. To get it turned inside out and it never fails when I go to demonstrate this I become a little bit butterfingery there we go and you just pull it through that's pretty quick and easy so release it pull it the rest of the way through I have my nicely turned out tube and because we had ironed that fold down and stitched along the edge, it forms a nice neat edge where it just naturally pokes in. So we have a finished edge and we have a raw edge. Now I double checked my measurements and I found that the six and three quarter inch length was what I was liking for this size for the 19 and a half inch scrunchie. So I'm going to use a bodkin to thread my elastic through the tube. You could use a safety pin attached to the end and then you feed it through or a bodkin. These are about a dollar, and I like using a bodkin. If you've never used one before, it's like a metal clamp, and there's a slider that will tighten the clamp down. So you slide it to the head to open it up, clamp it on the elastic, Push the slider towards the opening and it's really nice and secure. On the other end, you can put a safety pin or I'll often just pop on a wonder clip. That way I'm not going to lose the end in my tube. So just like with the safety pin, you feed the bodkin through the tube, scrunch and pull it along. I like to kind of keep the wonder clip and anchored by my pinky just to make it easy and see how easy that was to feed through with the bodkin and to me it was worth the dollar investment 
The first bodkin I bought was in a sewing shop, I don't remember the name of it, in New Orleans. And I spent about a dollar on it. And then I ordered additional bodkins when I was teaching a sewing class at church. And buying them in bulk, it was less than a dollar a piece. So there we go. We've got the two ends together. We are going to sew these ends together under the sewing machine. If you had quarter inch elastic, you could just tie it in the knot or uh, you could sew the quarter inch elastic. I find sewing elastic ends together one of the fiddliest things in sewing and I find it a little more manageable using this 3 8 inch elastic over the quarter inch elastic. So I have them overlapped and I'm just going to take a pin and I'm going to secure them hopefully without poking myself. I'm going to secure them with the pin and then I'm going to get it underneath my machine and I'm also going to use an awl to help me kind of anchor it and when I go to pull the pin out the all will help hold it in place and then I have less risk of sewing my finger. I've yet to do that. I've had some close calls and I've had a couple of friends who have gone to the ER after machine stitching a finger. So see I've got it nice and secure. Let's head over to the sewing machine. Right. So I have my elastic pinned. I'm going to get it under the machine. It's small and in the round it just doesn't want to lie flat and that's where this awl really comes in handy. Put down my presser foot. I'm going to change it over to a lightning stitch. Pull the pin out and I've got the awl holding it down. all close to the machine so I'm not in danger of sewing my finger. A few stitches. Cut it off. There are my snips. Alright, so I'm going to take this time to Snip some threads here. I plan on donating this scrunchie, so that's why I wanted to change over to the green thread. Hide it as much as possible. Okay, so here's my sewn edges. And this is the nice finished edge. Here's my raw edge. I'm going to shove this inside of here or tuck it if you want another word to use for it. And I do a little bit of fiddling with this. There we go. I've got the raw edge inside the finished edge. Zhuzhing it a little bit. So I want it to be super neat. Changed my stitch to a straight stitch. Get this underneath my sewing machine here. And let's just sew this closed. I'm going to reverse so I can lock in my stitch. And I'm going to cut the threads with my automatic thread cutter. And there we have it. Another scrunchie. Our next quick and easy sewing gift project is 
fabric bows. Isn't that adorable? Now you can make these in various sizes. This size starts out with a seven by 11 inch piece of fabric. And this size starts out with a five by nine inch piece of fabric. And you can see the difference in the size of bows. And you can make these any size as long as you keep the proportion the same and have a nice looking bow. I have made some really tiny ones for my granddaughter. The outcome of your bow will also vary depending on the fabric you use. This is a very stiff quilting cotton and this is a another woven, the seersucker, but it's got a little bit of a looser feel to it. I have made bows in chambray. I have made bows in viscose or rayon, which will have a nice floppy look to them. So the world's your oyster. You can make as many bows as you would like and in whatever fabric you like. These particular bows, I have slipped in a duck bill hair clip along the back because that's what I had handy. You know I love to use these when I'm cutting out patterns and storing the patterns. And it just slides in there and the girl can clip it to her hair. I think this looks really great on the back of the hair. Really sweet little girl feature. So I'm going to be making a bunch of these for our church sale. And I was thinking when I was making this sample last night that this isn't just for girls. You could turn this into a bow tie for a boy and I turned it into a bow tie for some stuffed rabbits that I made my grandsons very early in my pandemic sewing. If I can find a picture, I'll insert it there. They really did like their bunnies and uh, I found a free bunny pattern and then I just self-drafted the vest and made bow ties for them and the kids loved them. Let's head over to the ironing board and get sewing some cute bows. Okay, here I have some really cute Thomas the Tank Engine fabric and I wanna make a smaller bow. And so I have cut this out five inches by nine inches. And our first task in making this bow is to fold it right sides together and we are gonna sew along the long edge. And while we're here at the ironing board, we're gonna prepare our piece that goes over the middle. And this is a strip that is one and a half inches by three inches and you just fold it in, meet in the middle, give it a press, and we'll be back to using this in a moment. So let's head over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna try to stay out of the shot here while I sew this long edge. And I'm gonna put just a couple of clips in here to keep it together. while I sew it. All right, I've got it on a straight stitch, stitch length of two and a half. I'm lining the edge of the fabric up with the edge of my presser foot, which is about a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna sew, make sure I lock, reverse to lock in those stitches. Sew on down. Again, I'm locking those stitches in. All right, so I'm just going to clip some of these threads so they don't poke out. When I finish this, and I'm just going to turn this right side out and it's just, I don't need a turning tool for that, just 
push it through and then pull it out. All right, so we have these two raw edges here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my seam in the middle and I'm gonna call this the wrong side of my fabric. We are going to finish these edges so that we don't have those pesky threads to get in the way. We're gonna sew along this side and then we're gonna turn it and so everything will kind of be enclosed. But first I'm gonna head over, I'm gonna iron this down, get it nice and neat, and then I'll sew the sides. Now, I have one already prepared here where I've ironed it, folded it in half, and now I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna sew along this raw edge. Press a foot down, lock my stitch in, just letting the edge of the fabric follow the edge of my presser foot. Put the threads. I'm gonna use this opportunity to clip these stray threads I don't have my 18 snips out. We were traveling recently and I put them in my little to-go sewing box and need to bring them back to my sewing table. So anyway, we're gonna clip these threads and then you're just going to turn it over So now we have no exposed raw edges. This is the front, this is the back of the bow. And very simply, we've got this, the middle, I'm gonna pinch with my fingers and I'm just going to accordion, kind of pleat that get some semblance of a bow here. And I will finesse this a little bit. Let me stick a jumbo clip here so you can see what it's gonna look like. So now I'm gonna take that little piece, that one and a half inch by three inch strip that I prepped at the ironing board. I'm gonna wrap it around this and sew it. So let me get that piece and show you the next step. Here's my ironed strip and I am simply going to wrap this around my bow which will give it a nice finish and I'm going to, since I have words here in the center, make sure that I have it going the correct, the correct way. I've got part of the word railway there. Doesn't that look cute? I think a Thomas the Tank Engine fan would love this. So I'm gonna scrunch this tight and I'm gonna be able to finagle it later some. And I'm gonna just stick this under my presser foot close as I can match up the ends and I think this all is going to come in handy again it's funny I've not used this as much as I could or probably should and I'm getting a lot of use out of this all today this is by Annie.com and I purchased it on Amazon I bought it when I was making bags and I'm finding it pretty useful. 
So I have my stitch length on 2.5 and I'm going to move my needle a little over a little bit as far as it'll go. So that I can get right up close to that bow. And I'm going to reverse. And then come forward. Lock in the stitch with a reverse. Isn't that cute? I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to trim some of this bulk away. Now this can be pinned to an outfit. You could run another fabric strip underneath this if you wanted to make it a bow tie. And uh, I'm just going to stick a duck bill hair clip underneath there like I did the other ones. And I've got another cute little bow for a little girl's hair. The last project that we're working on today, and we could title today's video, Sewing Scrappy Gifts for Girls, is Reusable Makeup Wipes. Now I have already made some, and one way of presenting them could be to Make a stack of several. This is a stack of seven, so that would be one for every day of the week, and to tie it with a ribbon. I think that's really cute. The other option would be to get a pretty dish, and you could artistically place one of those lingerie wash bags in the bottom, and then place however many of these wipes that you wanted to make inside. And that would make a super gift. And this is actually a gift from me to me. I give myself the best gifts. This set of wipes, I originally cut out four inches by four inches. And once it was sewn up, it was more like three and a half inches. And so that's a good size. You can see it in relationship to my hand. I have also made a, another size out of some of my off cuts. This was an off cut and it's three inches square, but I wasn't gonna throw this away. And this I think would be a great size for toner. But I wanted to make some that were just a little bit larger. So that is what we're going to make together. I'm going to make some that are five inches square. Now I know some people make these round and I think the only reason is because that's how they're marketed. The ones that you throw away, they're marketed as being round, but I think it has a nice, easier finish to do them square. And since there's no magic reason for them to be round, I'm making my reusable wipes square. So let's head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make these. I have cut out my quilt and cotton and my towel into five inch squares. And here they are. I have placed them right sides together and pinned along the sides. Now I'm going to start here and I'm going to leave a good size opening to turn it. So I've got this tulip pin to remind me to stop. So I'm going to get this under my machine. You notice that as I pull this away, the towel does have a tendency to fray. I'm going to make sure that I have my straight stitch, length is 2.5, and I'm going to start sewing, just following the edge of my presser foot, like I have with all these projects. 
put it. I'm going to make sure I have a real strong place for where I'm going to turn it. So I am backing up a few times there. Now on my machine, I know that when the fabric hits this point of the foot, I can pivot with the needle down and it's going to line up exactly to the edge. So again, I'm going to follow the edge around. And some of these things that seem little make a big difference in your sewing, like knowing how your press of feet work. They're designed in a way to save you time. And um, so it's worth the time to figure out what the markings on them are for and how to use them to your advantage. So again, I'm coming to that point. I'm quite evenly cut and turn and pivot and come around. I'm also trying to stay out of the shot here. See how that's pulling away? When it comes time to uh, turn it out, normally I'm all over clipping corners, but I am not gonna clip in this case because I don't wanna weaken or have the potential for fraying. And after all, this is a makeup wipe, right? So I want it to be secure it doesn't have to be super fancy. So I'm coming to my tulip pen. I'm gonna reverse and come back again, and reverse a little bit and cut the stitch. That'll make it a stronger point where I'm gonna be turning it. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to clip loose threads. Now you could clip the corners if you wanted to. Like I said, I am not going to because this just wants to fray and I'm gonna be turning it out. So I'm going to skip that step. I just don't wanna weaken my seams. I'm just pushing it through. Gonna poke out the corners. And here's the step where I would take the time to poke them out with my fingers. Take something with a blunt end like this and run it along the seam line and poke a little bit and make it neat. Then I would take it to the iron Iron that down and finish it off. This could a little use a little more poking. So I'm gonna switch to one that I've already got prepared. Here's one that's already been turned. And this is where my opening is. I'm gonna sew all along the edge and I'm gonna increase my stitch length to three or 3.1, 3.5, somewhere like that. A little bit longer stitch. I'm gonna stitch this close at about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna go around all four edges, and then I'm gonna pick a point in the middle and just sew down a line to keep these fabrics together. Make it nice and sturdy. Move my needle over just a little bit. I'm going to sew all the way around. Again, I'm trying to stay out of the shot so I have the best visual on what I'm doing. But since these are for me, I'm not as concerned about the neatness. I do want them to look pretty, but if one or two of these come out a little wonky, 
that's okay. Before I sew over that, I'm going to snip this so it doesn't get caught in the stitch line and look messy. So I've secured all around the edges. Since this is a little bit bigger than the other one that I've made, I think I'm going to do two stitch lines. Again, I'm not going to be too precise on this. The whole purpose is to hold the two layers together. Here comes that all in handy again. Just try not to keep that, try to keep that from pleating. Another one about here. I'm going to smooth that out. Now I should have thought about it. So on the ones that I donate to be sold, I think I will just keep the stitch inside this border I've created around here instead of coming off here. I think that'll look a little bit nicer. I think I'm gonna switch over to better pair of scissors. Definitely need to get my good snips out. So there we go. This one started out as five inch square. It takes up most of my hand. And I think this will be great for me for makeup remover. And I've got several more to sew and I'm liking this. Well, there you have it. Three scrappy gifts you can sew for girls in just minutes. We've got scrunchies, we have bows, and reusable makeup wipes. All of these just took minutes to make, and if you were to batch sew, you could get a lot of this done in a short amount of time. If you liked this video, I have links to some other videos that I think you might enjoy. And as always, until next time, I hope you have a joyful week and that you find the good in all things, especially sewing. Thank you.